Hello, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labacan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show. Uh, we've got a in the news segment for you today, and I've got some good companies to talk about with uh, uh, very good news. I'm going to start with um, Goliath uh, Resources. They had some great news out today. I'm really happy for them there. A sponsor of my shows and uh, very glad to have them on. I've been talking a lot about them lately because as you can see here, um, there's been a series of excellent news releases out since they started their um, 18,000 meter program in uh, June. Uh, June 12th, they announced, then on the 13th, they announced that they hit visible gold at their sure bed zone, they hit three separate zones with visible gold, June 17th, June 19th, some more visible gold, uh, July 24th, visible gold, oh, sorry, I was getting the dates wrong there. Uh, they drilled uh, 66 meters of uh, sulfide rich quartz breccia with visible gold over 20 meters on July 31st. Then on August the 10th, they announced that they uh, drilled 14 uh, gram, 14.85 grams over six meters at Sherbet. Uh, they expanded the footprint. And then today, this news release was quite exceptional. Goliath intercepts 23 meters of 21.08 grams per ton of gold. Uh, gold equivalent, including 14 meters of 33.75 uh, gold equivalent at the Sherbet gold Ga Golden Gate feeder zone in the Golden Triangle of British Columbia. Uh, as you can see here, uh, they talk about where the uh, where the hole was uh, the the pad for that hole. Talked about the grades, uh, quite exceptional stuff. Uh, included in that was nine meters of 50 grams uh, of gold or 1.62 ounces of gold equivalent. Uh, here is a good um, uh, picture of the visible gold uh, that they're hitting uh, in the uh, drilling. Been hitting a lot of that visible gold um, and having a great success rate with the drilling. Uh, GD uh, intercepted, GD157 intercepted uh, from 117 to 139 meters and is only one of five intervals encountered in this hole. Assays are pending for the four remaining intercepts from this hole, which include the Bonanza Shear. Um, they hit sulfide rich uh, breccia, quartz breccia. Uh, at 72 to 86 meters, 93 to 104, they hit sulfide rich quartz breccia, uh, 433 to 470 quartz breccia. Mineralization is characteristic of the Bonanza shear. Uh, this is an important stru um, uh, uh, structure in the, uh, the uh, whole system. Uh, 482 to 500 meters. Again, they hit that quartz breccia in the Bonanza shear. Uh, the footprint of Sherbet Bonanza has been expo exponentially expanded with the discovery of five additional strongly mineralized zones, including the outpost, full house, Humdinger, Kahuna, and lower Sherbet <coughs> zones. Uh, 65 holes drilled on Sherbet in 2023 have all hit either the Sherbet zone and or the Bonanza sister shear, representing a 100% hit rate. 25 holes drilled in 2023 on Sherbet have intersected visible gold. Uh, so, you know, that's a pretty high percentage, 38% hit rate uh, with visible gold encompassing a 1.6 square kilometer that uh, remains wide open. All the incurrence of visible gold to date have been identified with, within quartz breccia and veins in contact with or close proximity to sphalerite and or galena mineralization. Uh, based on the 2021 and 2022 drill assay results of 89 widely spaced P2 
pierced points. The Sherbet zone and Bonanza are currently modeled to be 5.5 million metric uh, uh, cubic meters uh, and 13 million cubic meters respectively. Uh, as you can see here, these are the zones that are lining up. Uh, and then they go into a great deal more detail about the uh, results, but that headline is a real eye catcher. Um, you know, you've got a metal factor of over 400 uh, gram meters there when you hit 21 ounce, grams of gold, over 23 meters uh, uh, included, and that was 14 of uh, 33. Nine meters of fifty. Some really rich, high-grade gold is in this system, and you know I've said before uh, that I think that Goliath is sitting on one of the or, or the best new discovery in many years. This project was high, hidden away under a glacier that receded. They spotted the uh, uh, exceptional mineralization potential and uh, have been drilling it, but, you know, their boots on the ground, they've been drilling it over now three years, but they've only had less than a year of actual boots on the ground. And um, that that's quite a su su exceptional set of results that they have. What really stands out to me is the, the, the geological team is quite exceptional. Uh, they really have an understanding of the system. Uh, you don't get a 100% hit rate by accident. Uh, that is indicative of a very powerful gold mineralizing system. And also that your, your geological team has an excellent uh, handle on that, that, that mineralization. So it's quite a spectacular situation that uh, Goliath has on their sherbet zone, but it's not the only one. As you can see on page two of their news release here, um, there this is the sherbet zone, uh, the border of it, where it outcrops. And then over here, you've got the Golden Gate feeder. Uh, there's a few key structures here, this one here, uh, as well as this one and this one. And, uh, and but then they've got other project or other prospects on their ground uh, in close proximity that is suggestive of a very big uh, um, uh, source of all of this mineralization that could be associated to one big uh, heat engine. And uh, collectively with what they have at, at the Sherbet Zone, the Golden Gate Feeder, uh, and, uh, and all these other targets is quite exciting. They're drilling away and um, and hitting a lot of high grade uh, in their first batch of holes that are coming out of this year's drilling. And with the uh, high <clears throat> potential of visible gold, I suspect that they'll have a lot more uh, of this uh, high grade gold to report in the not too distant future. So take a look at uh, Goliath Resources. Galantis Gold um, is a uh, 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 an exciting project or company uh, for me because I, I, these are this is a sponsor of my shows as well, and uh, at their project, the Omago project in Northern Ireland, uh, they're looking at um, having a mining contractor called QME Mining, uh, which is very experienced in mining in Europe. Uh, to do uh, contract mining on this project. And um, they're expecting uh, uh, to ramp up to 5,000 tons per month of both development and production stoke mineralized material within 12 months of startup. QME, QME estimates the cost of development prior to achieve, achieving steady state production is approximately 12 million, so not a lot of money to get into that full production. They would look at about 1,200 to 1,400 gold ounces um, a month after completion. Um, they're gonna fo um, focus on the um, Joshua and Kearney veins and uh, focus in on uh, testing or going after the dilation zones. In these orogenic gold systems, this is where the rock opens up 
and allows the gold bearing fluids to make their way uh, into those and cool up uh, much bigger pro um, targets or sorry, uh, uh, much bigger zones of mineralization. But it's also very important to um, uh, to target your drilling. Uh, Galantis, uh, they did an update on their Joshua vein drilling. Uh, they successfully intersected massive sulfides in hole 196, which is a projected dilation zone at the Joshua vein. So not only is the uh, is the dilate are the dilation zones important for mining, uh, they're also important for um, uh, exploration. Uh, and I'll I'll show you later in the map why. This is the first exploration hole to be drilled from surface in 19 months, filling in a large gap in the earlier resource model. Assay results from this hole are pending. High-grade dilation zones at Joshua remain open along strike and down plunge. Previously at Joshua, the com company successfully intercepted wide multiple wide high-grade intersections, including nine grams per ton of gold over 21 meters, uh, eight gram, 8.4 grams over 26 meters. Um, and uh, there's a good quote from Mario Stefano, who's the CEO of Galantis, uh, who commented, and I quote, we are looking forward to having QME begin development at, at OMA as it is, has the workforce and equipment to quickly commence development and mining with a plan to provide a sustainable 5,000 tons per month of mill feed. As we've kicked off drilling at Joshua from surface, we will focus on resource expansion at the Joshua and Kearney veins to expand known resources with a goal to increase the mill capacity from 180 tons per day to 500 tons per day. In addition, with the recent successful drilling at the Gerlock project, including this one is in Scotland, including 20, um, uh, 1.88 grams of gold, 1.23% copper, 0.51% zinc, and 0.01% cobalt, uh, over 33 meters, we will look to expand our exploration efforts in northern Scotland. Uh, end quote. So here's a long section of the Joshua vein that show showing the dilation dilation trends and air, yellow yellow arrows with some key intersections and location of the latest intersection on hole 196. So as you can see here, you're getting this nice high grade uh, continuous. Uh, zones of dilation where the rocks are opening up and they're following a similar trend. And so that helps you to target that as you go deeper. This one near surface here, uh, you can get at quite easily from uh, uh, get catching that dilation zone and the second one and not a lot deeper to catch the third one. And, um, you know, maybe there's more of these to be found as well. Here they show you some nice looking uh, uh, core that's still assays pending. Um, so again, at the OMA project, um, the mining of the dilation zones will be very important uh, because this is where you can get a lot of high grade gold pooling up and, and, uh, and costs are very low for development as well as uh, uh, for mining that kind of material. Uh, which means a high margin, and that's what you like to see. Uh, but I think it's also that, uh, you know, a crucial part of this company is the chasing of these orogenic gold systems deeper. And the dilation zone real, dilation zones really help in that uh, because it gives you predictability of where to chase that uh, that system, that orogenic gold system much deeper. And then they've also got the uh, Gerlock project in um, Scotland that looks like a new uh, VMS uh, story that could be quite explosive as well. So they really have a, a good combination of both uh, orogenic gold at their OMA project and uh, VMS at their uh, Gerlock project. Okay, now I'm going to move over to Silvercrest. Uh, Silvercrest 
reported their second quarter 2023 results and guidance for the second half of 2023. Um, I'm going to actually, let's go to the quote first. Uh, uh, Eric Fear, who's the CEO, commented, and I quote, last Chispas continued to deliver strong operational performance in the quarter with an increase in recovered metal, mine operating income, and net free cash flow from Q1 2023. The announcement of our updated technical report subsequent to quarter end was an important milestone for the company and confirms the high quality nature of the Lost Chispas operation. With lowest quartile mine level all in sustaining costs over an eight year mine life, the results from Q2 2023 confirmed the quality of the operation was 7.6 million cash and 3.6 million bullion added to the re balance sheet after repaying the remaining 25 million of debt and investing 10 million in sustaining capital. With this work now behind us, our debt fully repaid a healthy balance sheet and strong margins and free cash flow expected from the operation we are well positioned to focus on growth at Las Chispas and pursue capital allocation opportunities. We are already executing our recently announced 10 million exploration program to focus on high grade reserve replacement opportunities and will soon return to drilling new or under drilled targets in proximity to the mine. We are also pleased to issue formal guidance for the second half of 2023 some really good information in there that um, uh, they're increasing the recovered metal um, and uh, increasing net free cash flow. That's always a good thing. Um, the uh, it's a high grade uh, project with low cost, uh, which uh, all in sustaining costs. Um, they this this one here really is a nice one. Uh, Confirm the quality with 7.6 million in cash, 3.6 million bullion added to the balance sheet while they were repainting 25 million of uh, debt and investing 10 million uh, in sustaining capital. Uh, so now they're, they're, they're making a lot of money. Uh, they're sitting on a lot with the, uh, with the bullion that they have of gold and silver. They're paying down debt, they're spending money, and they're still growing their cash position. Uh, that's just indicative of the uh, kind of high uh, quality project this is, this mine is. And uh, uh, they talk about the revenue of 62 million and cost of sales of 23.7, which represents a 62% operating margin. Uh, they talk about the net free cash flow of 43.7 million or 30 cents per share, uh, increased cash balance, cash flow up, cash costs. They're all in sustaining costs is $12.70 per ounce of silver equivalent while selling it for, uh, you know, it's what it's over 20 bucks right now. So that makes for, for a pretty healthy profit margin. Uh, they ended the quarter debt free uh, with treasury assets totaling 59 million, cash of 53.4 million and gold and silver bullion of 5.6 million. And they have access to 70 million in a revolving credit facility. Um, so, you know, Last Chispas is a, uh, a quite exceptional mine. Um, it has very low costs and high grades and high margins, uh, and yet the uh, stock is trading at a 52-week uh, low right now. Uh, I think that this company offers some very exceptional performance potential for investors that want access to a, a silver company, a silver and gold producer. Uh, that uh, mines gold, uh, gold and silver at very low costs and has very high grades, and uh, and they're putting the money in to grow their uh, their future as well. Uh, that's a heck of a combination, and uh, why I like the company so much. 
Uh, as always, my shows are for information purposes only. It's important for you to do your homework, speak with your financial advisors, um, uh, and check out the company's websites. Um, you know, I, I don't do these shows to affect the price of these stocks. I do them to help you out with the uh, with the due diligence and doing your homework. And uh, then, you know, it's your responsibility to go out there and do that homework, uh, con um, check out their websites, look at their news releases or corporate presentations. And uh, I think you'll find out why I'm very bullish on all these companies. On that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.